give me just a small break. Don't judge me too much. Again, everything I'm doing on the channel is from the perspective of a normal, average person. So, I think this is what makes it real. Because my pain can easily become your pain. My struggle can as well be your struggle. And my winnings, my success, for sure can be something that you can pull off. So yes, hopefully this helps you leveraging vector forces. I will bring the gloves to prove my theory. Why on the Aferata you should have gloves? Why you should use good quality gloves? I'm, uh, I'm old. Let's be clear about that. And as you can see, also a bit fat. Reality of life. I'm a normal person with daily problems as anyone else practically. It affects me. I'm average. At the end of the day, I am average. I'm aiming, if possible, at my age, given my circumstances, to climb level F, most extreme via ferrata in Spain. Spain is a different animal, let's be clear about that, when it comes to via ferrata, which I love. Their culture, their way of thinking and approaching via ferrata, it is unique. I love it. They have a couple of them with difficult overhangs. And again, I'm average and I'm fat. So, I'm trying to improve my situation. One of the things that I'm doing is coming, when I can, into this park and cruising through this element here. And somehow, this allows me to simulate overhangs on the Aferata. Now, the problem here with this metal is being too slippery for the gloves. It is my first time I'm bringing these gloves here. I was expecting it to happen because it happens also with bare hands, but it might happen on Viaferat as well. So at the end of the day, it is good training. Now, what's this story with the gloves? Why do I keep insisting on gloves, gloves, gloves? Because without gloves, by now only doing one length of it, my hands would have hurt a lot. I would have no, no longer been able to to do the second, I would have done the second length, but that's that, I would have stopped there. Now, let's do the second length as well. And I'm, I can tell you this, the only issue I currently have is being slippery. Otherwise, I don't feel any pain. And my problem so far, always coming here, was pain. But because I have a gloves, I no longer feel the pain, which means this is increased performance. Wearing proper gloves on the Aferata will help you complete the route just because you don't lose performance by not having the proper equipment. So each time you might listen to others that, and look, I'm not, I have great viewers to the channel, amazing, loyal to me, and thank you for that. They've been open and sincere about it and they told me we buy cheap gloves they work and we don't feel the need for more and that's correct when you do the aferata in your level of performance then you don't need more you only need something to somehow protect you there the bare minimum when you go above your level then you get stuck challenged and when that happens you need as much help possible good equipment good gear will provide that extra leverage. And I will tell you something else now that we are here. Some good to know things about Via Ferrata as a beginner. For example, try at home in a park like this. Try do this following exercise. Just come here like this and try to do this and see for how long can you sustain it. And I can tell you that, not for that long because you are using your you are employing your muscles to their full capacity and you hold your body the weight of your body in your muscles and this well your muscles if you don't have the proper training will run out of energy super fast and the question here is what can you do to stay on a via ferrata as long possible but as rested possible well let's do the same exercise now like this and i can tell you this I, I i i use the same position of the hand just to simulate the same the same circumstances no 
and I can keep staying like this. And when I stop, I don't feel that much pain, and I'm not that much tired. For the, sa for the single reason, because I extended my arms and my muscles, and it was the physics there helping me. The muscles, they're not working that much. I was just hanging. Now, let's try stay like this even harder. For how long can you stay like that? <laughs> I already gave up. I probably I can do a bit more, but that's that. So, in this position, I wasn't able to, to, to last 10 seconds. Now, let's do it differently. Let's do it this way. And let's see for how long can I last. I already feel better, right? It already shows that I can last for more and for longer, right? Compared to before. I'm getting tired as well. And the more you do hard extreme exercises, the tired you get and then the less you can continue. It is why I'm always stressing about this. You should have a resting system with you. I see many going without, thinking I can do it. Nobody says you cannot, but what if something happens? When that something happens, having a resting system might, might get you out of a situation. Now let's continue leveraging physics, no? The physics of our body. Stretch, stretch your body. Good. So now we stretch our body and let's advance. So I'm using physics. I, I have an angle here which makes it even easier on the upper body. And now let's climb. You see, with the leg, I pull myself up. And look how easy it is to get here and then to even get here. Let's try to do the same exercise only by using arm force. And by the way, what you should learn from what I just displayed is not the force, it is the vector force. I'm hanging like this, and now with the legs, I'm creating angles, vector forces. And now I'm helping myself to go up. So some of the body weight sits onto these vectors, but always stretched, because if you are not stretched, you consume energy unnecessarily. So you have to stay extended as much as you can. One of the exercises you should learn to do is low impact movements. You can brute force push yourself up, but that one consumes, erodes a lot of your energy. If you train yourself to be able to go low energy, low impact like this. So I'm here, I'm putting the leg here, I'm putting this leg here. You see, I'm not rushing at all, I'm putting this. I'm coming here, then I'm coming here, and now look how easily I'm navigating through the same elements where otherwise would have been extremely difficult. Let's see how difficult. So let's do the same movement only with our arms. Whew, I'm already tired. <laughs> I'm not able to continue. <sighs> and that's it. I'm tired. I told you I'm average. But now let's let's do it using the vector forces. Let's see. Can I actually do it? Oh, I'm coming here. I'm coming here. I'm coming here. Let's move this here. <laughs> Look, something that was impossible before it became possible just because I was using vector forces. So Transfer as much as you can of your body weight onto the wall, or onto the cable, onto the elements of the Via Ferrata. How? By employing these vector forces, by learning how to move and how to hang. Because if you'll try to do it with your arms, with your upper body all together, you might do it up to a point. And going forward, it no longer works. So, this is not about being weak. It's not about being a loser. It is about being smart. Learning how to use your brain and manage your ego. How to manifest a good, healthy character. Now, I will put my ego, my ego first and I'll try to do at least one more run for my shoulders here to train because it is why I came here. 
let's see if I, I can do it. Oh, it hurts so much, you cannot imagine how much it hurts. But I need this, because if I don't properly train, I will get myself into trouble, trouble when alone on the Aferata. So I have to do it.